G'day, g'day everyone, welcome back to Pint Party, the two streams on Turn the Game Gimmick into a tech startup with John. We're back on the Eggs of Pwns train! Oh man. I just realized it's been a while since I played Eggs of Pwns. And for most games, like, you know, if you if you you know you forget one or two things, it's not that big of a deal. But with Eggs of Pwns, if you forget one or two things, it can literally mean the difference between being able to complete a puzzle puzzle. And a puzzle being completely impossible, because, like, everything builds on top of everything else. Uh, that being said, though, looking over my own code from last time over here, I don't think I've missed out on all that much. I think I'm pretty much... pretty much on the money. I'm pretty happy with, uh, my understanding of it all. I can, I can see what I've tried to do. Um... So, today's puzzle is... We need to get, uh... Selenium Wolf's Kid, this one here, and sign them up for AP English. So instead of being in regular old English class, they want to be in AP English, which is like a fancy American English class that counts as a degree. Um, basically, it's just an yeah, it's just it's just advanced English, like by high school student standards, it's advanced. It's university level English, basically. And you get credits towards your um, towards your degree if you if you do it instead of regular English. So we got to sign them up for that. Uh, but the trick to it is we got to you know we got to find it on the schedule here. And uh, AP English I believe only appears once, and then everything else appears no more than twice. So then we have to just basically completely reshuffle their schedule. But I'm still not entirely sure of how to do that. So... Okay, but it seems like I've left myself some notes. Uh, replace AP English time slot with class. Replace class with schedule time slot. Okay. Um... Right. So, what am I actually doing? Where am I starting? So I'm starting here, so I'm grabbing this, and that's got... Alright, that's got that and that. Okay, 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 so that's got what I need to look for in it. So I send over English. Uh, global, okay, so... Alright, okay, so it just, it gets ready to send that, but I haven't received it yet. So I go, okay, 800, 800, 802, so I'm going into the room, I grab the student's file, skip over their name, and then create a scribe, who's then gonna do a bunch of stuff. Alright, and then test the OF, true, jump to lobby, otherwise do this, and we're just gonna run through that, right, okay, and copy out that kid's whole file, that makes sense. Drop that, yep, and then it's because the scribe is super, super dirt simple, so we're just gonna kill the scribe, grab their file, and move along. Wait, why am I calling mode here? Because that's going to make it... Oh, because it starts local. Oh, because it's born local. Right, okay, 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 okay. So then we go global, and then we get the word English. Right, okay. And then we test if F equals X, but we haven't grabbed... Oh, right, no, no, because we're holding a file in our hands. That's right, okay. So then we're going to go looking for English through there, and if it's false, all right. And then once we do, we get it. We copy M to X, so we copy... It. All right, then we grab AP English, right, okay, then we go local, copy X to F. Okay, so then we're copying AP English into there. Schedule. Okay, and schedule is going to grab all the classes running all the way through the day, except for lunch. But I'm pretty sure that's not a big deal. Because I think we just have to replace everything other than lunch. Or we just do a check and say, is it on the list at all? And if it's not on the list, like that way we can skip over like English. I mean, actually that might be too bad, not be too bad. Because then we can skip over just like a bunch of stuff. Like like if it's on this list, but it's not on this list, then we skip it. No, if it's not, if it's on this list, oh no, if it's not on this list, I should say. Then we just skip it. That probably makes the most sense. 
Not really. I mean, I, I said it. It came out of my brain. It happened in my brain. And I barely understood what I just said. In fact, I don't understand what I just said, so... Yeah, okay, that's not gonna happen. So what's the best way to approach this? Place the AP English time slot with a class. Okay. Um... I still don't know how to do that. So we're gonna have a file with all of this and the times in it, so... Well, it's also got AP... It's also born with AP English... Alright, find AP English and send. <sighs> okay, okay. So we need to find the time for that first, so that way we can find the corresponding time in our actual schedule. Okay. Um... Okay. Right, uh, I'm just gonna leave that alone for now. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna create a third exa just to stick my notes in right now. Like, we'll get rid of this uh, for the actual puzzle, but just for now, let's put our notes in there. Um, the English search. Then what I wanna do is I wanna mark, because we wanna make, a, I wanna make another loop. Um. Because that was literally just to replace English with AP English, like in this in uh, in this schedule. So that's that's now done. Okay, so Mark, uh, what do we want to call this? What do I want to call this? Uh, student. Might as well call it student. This is the student schedule. Yeah. And what is that going to do? So now it's all communicating locally. Although, I don't know why why they're talking local. It, it doesn't... Well, I mean, it might. I might... Oh, right, because I might do some more stuff with this. And if I do, then I want to have that flexibility in the code. Okay, yeah, now I understand. Now I understand. Now. All right. Oh, oh, what's this? Who, do you want? Who wants to talk to me? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. So, student. Um, how do I want the student? What do I want the student method to do? I'm just trying to wonder, like, what's the best way to kind of handle this? And I think maybe... Hmm. Well, the first thing we're gonna, we need to do is find AP English. Oh, I see what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna find AP English and say, okay, it's gonna happen at this time. And then this one is gonna get that time and then search its file for it and go, what's happening in that time slot? This is happening in that time slot. Okay, so we send back that word and then we say, find out when this is happening and we just go back and forth like that. Um, the only problem is I don't know how to break out of that loop because we might, if we do that, that if we do it that way, then that means we need to like, figure out a way of getting to the end of the file. Yeah. Hmm. It's just because we could end up in an infinite loop. Unless we went the other way, like we could work our way down this list and say, what are you doing at 8.15? 8, 8 I'm doing Spanish too. Okay, cool. What are you doing at... No, nah, that's not going to work either. No. Nah. No, I don't like that. Um, Alright, well let's just stick with this original idea. Maybe, maybe, maybe the way to fix it will present itself later on when I better understand what the heck I'm actually supposed to write. <sighs> okay. So, we need to find AP English. So, grab 200, and... 
mark find class. And this is kind of the same as this. In fact, it just about is if I do that. And instead of going to English search, we're going to go to find class. All right. So then we can just skip all the way through that. And then instead of seeking minus one, we actually want to seek two because we don't want that actual word. So wait, okay, so let's see, where's AP English? Just, just, for, just for the sake of it. It is... Where the heck is it? You'd think it'd be easy to spot, but it's actually not. Statistics, US history, AP English, okay, okay, okay. So we don't want, so like when we find this word, it's gonna start here. We don't want to start there. We want to go, and we don't want to start here. We want to start here. And it's like, and I know it's sort of like, well, hang on, but they're both 1405. But let's say we wanted world history instead. World history is at 1315, but what's after is at 1405. So those two numbers don't match. So we always want to get the number directly associated with that piece of data. So going back to just make sure we can do that. So that's going to find AP English, the time frame AP English. Okay. So then we're going to send that over. Uh, oh, geez, Lou. Everybody's talking to me today. Now, here in Melbourne, the, the government just announced that we have to all wear masks when we go outside, and I think everybody's sort of like going, oh, okay, so that's a thing now. I'm sort of like, yeah, dude. Um, all right. <clears throat> so I think that's what, yeah, I think there's, there's, Melbourne's, Melbourne's been set a Twitter at the moment. So my phone's going to buzz for a bit. I apologize for that. Uh, okay. So we do that, we get the time, and then I guess, I guess we gotta send back that time. What the heck am I gonna do with that time? Well, okay, so we have the time for AP English. Alright, so then what do we do with it? So we, we can use that to search for, let's see, 1405, and then we search for 1405. I understand what the heck I'm planning on doing. Okay, okay, right. Yeah, okay. And then copy uh, F to M, and that's going to be uh, do. My brain's struggling with figuring out the flow of information, but it feels good. I feel like I'm. I feel like my brain's getting a workout, which isn't something that's happened in a while. Because I've been playing x you know what I mean? Like, that's it, I haven't flexed my brain muscles in that way. So it's good, it's good. That's why you should really, honestly, I encourage everybody to play a puzzle game. It doesn't have to necessarily have to be x but like, play a puzzle game of some kind, you know, every now and again, because it just, it, it does, it's a workout for the brain. And so, you know, and it's good to like, you know, you know, flex them brain muscles. You know, every, everybody's always talking about pumping irons and doing, you can clearly tell I, I, I'm I cl clearly I, I am masterful in the techniques of going to the gym as you can see um, but everybody's worried about doing all of this stuff but nobody's nobody's worried about the thinky parts and being like hey I've got to flex my thinky parts so you should do that <sighs> this is what I'm trying to do right now so I send off the class time find out what's there replace it yeah so then what are we going to get back? We're going to get back a keyword. Uh, and that word will be, okay, well, they, we had this class at that time. So we need you to go and find that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then we're going to get copy M to X. And that's going to be uh, the next class. Um... We can make that two words. Uh, and then I need to go all the way back to the beginning of the file. Because we don't, I mean, I mean, this one, for example, was at 14.05. So it was like one of the last classes of the day. And if we just started from there, we'd end up at the end of the file. It'll error out and go, Poof. we don't want it to do that. So we want to go there and go all the way back. And then I guess jump back in a fine class. Like that can literally be that loop. That's like, 
Yeah. And then if we need to, if we need to, we can stick something in here to break out of this loop later on. Like they, this is our slot we can put into to break out of the loop. But for now, we just want to jump back into find class. So that can just run. That's, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, okay. So, okay, so I don't need that note anymore. Um, just leave that as that, just to clean that up a little bit. Okay, so that'll do that, and then it'll get the next class, and it'll say, okay, well that's it this time. Okay, but we need to manage the class's uh, word in, in this exa. So this exa uh, is going to receive Um, okay, so it's going to receive a time, so copy M to X, yep, so that'll be, oop, that'll be a class time, and then, uh, and then, and then I guess we, re we execute the same sort of a search loop that we did in find class in here but instead of a seek to we don't do a seek at all because oh yeah okay so we can't copy m to x oh hmm this is going to cause a problem um we need to manage uh we need to manage our class word because um, well, hmm. we could have the schedule exa send it back as well. There's actually no reason why it can't. Just for the sake of simplicity, but also because we can't store, we can't do copy M to T because we need our T-Register free to do testing for our search loop. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So then... Hmm. Yeah, actually. Okay, so we're gonna send the class time. And then we're gonna copy F to M, because remember, this is just move the file header forward, so it'll already be on the class name. And in this case, it'll be AP English, which is grand, because we want that. So we're going to get the class time. So actually, instead of calling it student, I'm going to call this uh, get time. Or should I call it out of time? Do it back to the future? No, no, we'll call it get time. Just I want to keep it simple. Uh, so class time is going to do that and then mark uh find time um because that's literally what we're doing uh okay and then we do a we do this kind of a gimmick again up here but instead of going to find class you're going to go to find time and then once you found it um it's going to, okay, so then we're going to copy uh, F to T, and then we're going to go back one, because we move the file header forward, and then we want to overwrite what's in there now that we've saved it. Actually, wait a minute. Yes, copy F to T. We can't send it over the M register yet, because we need, well, why not? Why actually can't we? Yeah, you know what? This is stupid. So hang on a minute. Instead of doing this, let's just change the order of operations. Yeah, so look, this is great. This is great. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to copy F to M. So we'll get that name and we'll send that off because we're good. We don't need that anymore. We, need to, we still need to go back one um, and, then, and then copy M to F. And that will be uh, the, the from find class. Yeah, yeah, and that'll be that class name that we just saved. So hang on, we send that off, get that, then we get the next class, great, and then we send off the class name, which we're gonna get in here, and we're gonna copy it in. 
you little ripper. Yeah, excellent. That's, oh, that's really nice. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So they can just talk back and forth like that. Yeah. Because there's no reason why they can't. All right. So then once we've done that, Okay, so hang on, that's the uh, next class. I should just make a note of that before I forget, because I almost forgot right then. I'm like, why am I doing it there? And I'm like, no, that's the next class. That's important. So we do that. Let me go back, and then we grab, and we replace it, which is grouse. Um, then I need to do, yeah, I need to go back to the start of the file. And then... Ugh. Yeah. Oh, I don't have to worry about lunch. I was actually worried about lunch. I don't mean in, in, in IRL. I'm, I'm good for lunch IRL. I had, you know, so I'm, I'm, all, I'm all G there. But what I was worried is because lunch isn't listed in here, but it's listed in here. But like no classes are going to be running. Yeah, look at this. Look, 1045 to 1225 There's like nothing. So this is just going to always be ignored by the program. So I can just ignore it. Sweet. All right, cool. I was worried that lunch was going to mess me up, but it's totally not. I think we're totally going to be G. Okay. Um... Oh, I just, I just realized this is going to have an absolutely enormous bug. So here's the problem, because this is what it does. Eng English, no, sorry, this, this, uh, this function here is going to find the first time slot, the very first, the earliest time slot that the class that's been given uh, is going to run. So the, for AP English, it's literally not a problem because it's only in here once. So the earliest time it runs is in is at 205 or 1405. And that's no problem. Um, because there's only one of it, so that's the only time it runs, that's fine. But then it's gonna get, let's say it gets like basically anything else. Like let's say world history is what it sends back. In fact, right, world history runs at 115 and it runs at 815. Now, that's cool. Uh, except for the fact that, well, except for the fact that, like, you know, because it's running, if, if I've got a free slot at one, if, you know, if I say, okay, what am I doing at 115 instead of AP English, um, it'll say, oh, well, the first thing on the list is Algebra 2, which you're not doing, um... What I'm saying is that we might end up with the same class in two different time slots. And we don't, we don't want that. So that might be a problem. Yeah. Yeah, that might be a problem. <sighs> How do I get around that problem, though? Well, the easiest thing to do is to delete the class. Is to go back through and like find it and just delete it. But I can't do that to this file because I don't want to make it. I don't want to make that permanent either. So I think what I'll actually what I actually need to do is I need to make it. I need to rip a copy of this and don't work directly in it. Work with another file. Yeah. Uh-huh, I think that's what I gotta do. I don't wanna do that though. Um <sighs> What do I wanna do? I think at this point I'm just gonna lean into the skid. And I'm just going to let the bug happen. I know that there's a bug, but I can't see how the bug is going to, like, manifest itself. I mean, at this stage, it's all academic. I think I think there's a bug. I think there's a bug, but I'm not certain. So we just, I mean, the only way to find out is to do the, is to do the dang science. So let's just do the thing and find out. So let's just keep it running. Okay, so seek 9999. We do that. Okay, um, and then, um, it needs to, oh, it needs to jump to get time. Right, okay, so then jump to get time. Okay, yeah, and then that can just run. Okay, 
So this is going to kind of run infinitely at this stage, I think. Yeah. So it's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. I don't really care if it is. Um, yeah, I'm pretty familiar with this. So I can get rid of that exit now. Okay, so let's run this. So it makes a copy. Okay, so now it's running and it's looking for... Yep, okay. Okay, and then it's running and it's now, I think it's just going to then end up... I don't actually know how many times this is going to run. Um, and for all I know, it's going to do this kind of infinitely. I think it is. I think it's actually running infinitely. Hang on, so let's see. It's getting 905. So it's getting stuck at health class, I think. Yeah. Okay. That's see. That's that's not where I was expecting the bug to manifest. So what's it doing? It's looking for 905. It goes great. I've got health class at 905. Hang on a minute. So it goes here. It goes. I've got health class at 905. So we copy that over. Go back. We copy in. Maybe M to F. So what did it, what did it copy in? It copied in the time. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, that's not good. Uh ooh, class time, and it receives the next class, and then it should send in the class name. Um, but it did it, or did it? Right, send over physics, I think, is what the word it sent over. So, 905 physics. Wait a minute, is that even correct? It is! Okay! So it was able to successfully swap out that class, but now it's just gonna run that infinitely. Yeah, okay. So... Maybe this doesn't go all the way back to the start. <sighs> yeah, okay. Um... Hmm, okay. So, we know this can run at least once. Uh, okay, we need to, no, you know what we need to do? Okay. We need to create a reset point. Mark, reset. So before it does that, we need to test for the end of the file, which doesn't move the file header forward, so we can do it here. And if true, jump to reset. Otherwise, do this and just run through that. So we add a little extra here, but it means that we can run through this all the way through till its end. Uh, and then we'll reset and then reset. Uh, no, you're not going to have to get time. You're going to... Well, you are, but you're going to do this first. Go all the way back to the start of the file and then jump back. Otherwise, we do this gimmick and then jump to get time to get the next uh, time to then feed the beast. Okay, well, let's see what that does now. If something blows up, we might be in trouble, but no, hang on. We're at the end of the file. Oh, no, it reset. Okay, okay, okay. That was good. That was good. That was what we wanted to happen. Okay. Now, now it's freaking out. Okay, now now we're freaking out. Now we got okay. So now we got some problems. Okay, so what are you trying to do? You're trying to get a class time, and you are trying to send over a class name. No, you're trying to get the class name back. I just want to move through this. So you're going to look through. 
Okay, English. Okay, sweet. Get the class time. Okay, so you're already here though. Well, it shouldn't matter. Okay, so you're gonna go look- you're- wait, so you're looking for- Alright, yeah, and you're gonna be a while, cause AP English happens here, so you're gonna be a hot minute. Looking for AP English. Okay, so then you found it, and then you're gonna go back, and you're gonna go- cool, it's at 205. Alrighty, so you got a time, and then you're gonna check if you're at the end of the, your file, which you're not. And then you're gonna do this, and you go, yes, we did find it. Uh, and we're going to grab that class file. Cool. Go back. Grab the next one, which is AP English, and replace that. Great. Time to get time and get the next class time. Which is for... And did we send over the next class? I think we did. We did. So hang on. It's this one. Yeah, this one's now got US history. Okay. So now it's looking for US history. Got it. Okay, so where's so where is US history? Right here. Okay, so we found it. So we go back and we say, hey, it's at 1225. And you're like, no worries, homie. We're at the end of our file. I'm gonna do this. Oh, and then we jump into get time, and that's a problem. Okay, yeah, no, no, we don't want to do that. Okay. So we don't want to actually jump into get time, we want to jump to find time. Yeah, because it's happening here, not in here. Uh, yeah, that's where we want it to happen, because we kind of want it to loop in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Alright. Uh, yeah. So let's try this again. So now... Yeah, it can start there, and then it'll reset itself. And go all the way through. But is it now just going to get stuck again? Is it now just getting stuck? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, because it, it's not unique. We're not, yeah. Okay, I think I know what I need to do. Um, instead of um, copying F to... Oh dear. Um, hmm. So if they're equivalent, we need to skip over it. Otherwise we end up in a loop. Because it just ends up sending the same data back over and over and over again. That's what's happening. Okay, okay. See, I told you I knew there was going to be a bug. I just didn't know how it was going to manifest itself. And I was expecting it to give us multiple classes and multiple time slots, not just get stuck in one class over and over again. That's why leaning into the skid wasn't a terrible idea. Okay. Whew, all right. But the question is, where... So, I think before we replace... Let's, we're just sending off that class name. Oh, I don't want to do that quite yet. Um... Copy F to M, that's, see that's gonna, and that's gonna set this off, it's gonna get the next class. Yeah, I need to do the testing in here, because I could do it in here, but this doesn't know the student schedule, so it doesn't, so it doesn't work by skipping this forward, it literally doesn't matter. 
Um, so I know I need to move around. I need to swap around when when I send data, but I'm not sure what data to swap and where. Um, so we send that off. That's fine. That's good. So then we get to here. But what we really want is instead of doing that, let's copy M to X, and that's going to be the class name. And then we're going to test if X is equal to F. And if it's true, we're going to jump to, uh, we'll call it, we'll call it, uh, um, next time. Um, otherwise it can fall through, uh, and seek one. Yeah. Seeking one's fine. And, uh, Okay, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. If, they're equi if they are equal, we'll do next time. If they are equal. Yeah, and then... If they're not, so if what's written in there isn't the same as what I've got, okay, so I need to send the class name first, um, so I need that to happen here, and then it's going to receive something, okay, um, so what am I, so I'm getting that name. I'm doing a test for equivalent. And if they are equal, we'll skip over it to send them the next class. Right, okay, 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 okay. Otherwise, otherwise, copy F to M, and that can be the next class. Uh, but that's gonna happen not there. It's gonna happen here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that next class. And then what's this? Copy M to F. Hold on, what's that? Find class. Copy M to F. Copy F to M. That's the next class. Oh, that's the name it's sending back. Oh, right. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, so no, because it'll be in our X register, so it won't be there. So it'll copy X to F. Yes. Okay, so we do that, and that's the, that's from find class. That's the class name. Um, that it's sent over. Yep. Then we'll write it in and jump back. Yeah, so that loop can just run happy as a lamb. Uh, okay, so mark next time. Okay, but if then if they're not e if they are equal. Oh, whoops! Why is that there? No, no don't do that. I mean, it, it, it kind of doesn't matter. Well, it does. No, I wanted to do it there. Okay, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So then we jump into next time, and in next time, um, why doesn't seek happen there? Because I do, no, 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 I don't want it to seek back, actually, because I want to seek forward. So we're on a class name right now, so I actually want to move over to... Because we're on a class name, and I want to, I want to skip from the class name to the time to the next class. So yeah, so I've got to seek two. Seek two. 
and then uh, copy F to M. So I want to do that. Uh, we're not going to do a copy X to F because they're not equivalent. We've yeah, kind of sorted that. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, we do. <sighs> if they're equal. No, if they're equal, I don't need to copy anything into the file. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because... Um... Yeah, I just don't need to copy. It's already it's some stuff's already there, so we're just gonna skip over that whole step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Uh, so copy F to M, and then jump into uh, get time. Yeah, because we just wanna. We just now, yeah, we're gonna say here's the next class for you to like search for, and we're gonna get back into like looking for the time. Okay. Okay. So that should help us get over that little speed bump. I hope. If I've figured this out correctly. I mean, it's still not perfect because we need to break out of the loop and we need to like put all this data back into the kid's file. Mm. That's kind of a problem, why is... Oh dear. Oh dear. Something broke. Something broke real bad. Okay, hang on. Let's go to here. I want to see what broke. So I skipped over, t wait, hold on. Where's the time? Uh, so you've got all these times and you go, okay. Okay, hang on, we need to skip over here. Okay, copy M to X. Test if they're equal, and if it's true, but they're not, so we're gonna go back. We're gonna copy the next class over, and we're gonna copy... Oh, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, 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 I see where I've messed up. Seek, negative one, I, I forget to seek. I forget to seek every time, every single time. Okay, so we're gonna do that, and then you're gonna go back, and then you're gonna put it back in, and then jump to get time. Yeah, and then if we go into the file, it's fine. It'll just reset. It's all G. Okay, so let's go looking through. It's going to send us back some more data. Actually, you know what? We'll just skip ahead. Okay, so we got some more data. Brilliant. We go, great. We go back to the end of the file. And then we're going to go and do a gig. Excellent. So now we want to know what's going on at 1225. And we've got health. Cool. Okay, now give me that class name, my dude. It's US History. We go, they're not equal. So we go back, we grab that and say, give me what's it, what, when, when's the next health class? We go, cool. Um, so we're doing that. Then we go back and we copy in US History. We jump to get time. Oh my God. Yeah, okay. All right. So you solve this one bug at a time, you just, you get to a problem and you solve it, then you get to the next problem and you solve it, and eventually if you solve enough problems, you get to finish the puzzle. To paraphrase Mark Watney from, uh, from The Martian. Okay. So let's see this run. Okay. So it's not totally breaking the file just yet. Um, but I have absolutely no idea, uh, so at a certain point, it's now kind of been done, um, Okay, so for some reason AP English is now appearing twice. So my original bug is now in it. Why is why is AP English at 115? What's at one what is at 115? AP English is never at 115. 
English is. Okay, so then... Um... I think what we actually need to do is solve for English. So, first. Yeah, 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 because that's not getting resolved. Um, okay. So basically what we need to do is get, we need to get rid of English because that's a class we don't want and we want AP English. We don't want AP English there. We want it there. Is US history happening at 115? Could we just do a straight swap? AP, oh AP US history is, yeah, no. Uh, is any other classes that this guy does happening at 115? Just, just curious. Um, we've got chemistry, English, geometry, pre-calculus, world history, so world history, no, pre-calculus is, okay, so we could do pre-calculus at 115, I just realised, what well, I think, I'm just not entirely sure how to, the best way to approach, uh, inserting, stuck. AP English will only be offered once and each other class will be offered no more than twice. Hmm. So... What we need to do is schedule... AP English first. Yeah. Maybe instead of swapping out English for AP English there, we just don't do that at all. We just have we just have this exa here go when it gets the word English to then swap it out for AP English, but it doesn't work either. See, yeah. See this this relies on a list where every word is unique. Um, and that's not good. I think my entire approach is wrong. I think it's part of the problem. I think I've come at this from the wrong angle. Yeah. <sighs> what? But how do I approach it? I could just rule. I could just go through a rule and be like, "What's at eight fifteen? What's the you know? What's at nine o five? Well, although, what if I just search for time? So, what if I go, okay, when's AP English happening? Fourteen o five. Okay. Maybe I just need to modify. Maybe I just need to modify the way my code runs the first time. Problem is... Um... I mean, I don't want to have English in the schedule at all. (sighs) 
Unless I swap it for a code word. No. Okay, hang on. I think going back to an earlier idea that I had, because I because I'm already copying all of this information and stripping out the name for while I'm doing the scheduling because I don't need that. That's just extraneous data that's just going to cause me more hassle. But what if I strip the times out too? So I just get a list of classes and. I, at that point, I swap out English for AP English, and this is now a class list. And I don't do anything with this class list, you see, because it solves more than one problem here. I don't do anything with this class list except use it as like a checklist. It's like, have you got Spanish 2 on the schedule? Yes, no. Have you got physics on the schedule? Yes, no. Have you got pre-calculus? Have you got computer art? Have you got lunch? Have you got health? Have you got English? And have you got US history? And we just move our way through it like that in order Maybe we strip out lunch as well. No, we can't strip out lunch. We have to leave that in there. Um, but I'd really, 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 really like to strip out lunch because if I did, I could just have a raw list of classes and just say, when are all of these happening? Okay, and then I can do a simple, like, replace whatever's at 8.15, replace whatever's at 9.05, and so on and so forth. Um... And then I could do, I could maybe, maybe build something a bit janky to skip over lunch and then just work our way through it that way. So we just build a completely separate schedule. <sighs> yeah. But I. I, I just, I can't see, I can't see how to modify this, so here's what I'm going to do. We're just going to create a new solution. Sometimes you just got to start from scratch. Sometimes you've just got to start from scratch. So, what I, so what do I actually want? Okay, so I want to grab 300. And I want to grab, uh, well I want this, actually, you know what, yeah, we'll, we'll do this same gimmick. So this is going to, uh, copy, uh, F to M, and that'll be the word English, and then copy F to M, and that'll be the word AP English, and then it can just blow up, as far as I'm concerned, because that's all it'll be needed for. Uh, XB is going to link 800 and link 800 again and then link 802 and then we're going to grab 235 so that's the class file and then we are going to <clears throat> um, do a search but before we do we need to create a uh, scribe and the scribe is going to do all kinds of cool stuff um, so all the scribe's gonna do is uh, actually um, have these start local actually that's what we're gonna do we'll just have it copy off literally the entire class list and then we will strip out English ourselves in scribe yeah that's how this will work okay so it'll cop so it'll create scribe and then we need to mark and we need to call we need to do uh, what am I doing Put it here and then we need to create a copy uh, copy student Okay, but well before we do that, I want to I want to strip out the name. So we're going to skip past the name, make even a note of that. Skip name, 
Okay, and then we're going to test EOF, uh, and if uh, true, jump to like, I don't know, we'll call it, I don't know, uh, drop, drop file, um, otherwise, uh, copy F to M, and jump to, oh wait, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, no, I don't want us to skip two, I want to skip three, because I want to skip the time as well, so I want to go skip that, skip that, skip that, and go straight to here, grab that, and then go one, two, yeah, that'll make it easier. So copy F to M and then seek to um, and then jump to copy student. Okay, so that's going to copy all of their classes, including lunch, which we still have to work on, but that's fine. Uh, and then once that's done, it's going to go to mark drop file. Um, uh, but okay, but it needs to it needs to receive something. So scribe is just going to copy uh, M to F and jump into scribe, and that's literally. Oh wait, it needs to make a file actually as well. Yeah, this is going to be bad. <laughs> It'll freak out if it doesn't do this. Make and then mark um, class list. Because this is going to be a checklist, okay, and it'll just, and that's literally all of that one, instead of jumping to scribe, it'll jump to class list, okay, and then once it does that, it can just do that all the live long day, okay, uh, and for drop file, we are going to uh, shoot the scribe in the head, because uh, we don't need it anymore, and I can't be bothered trying to build a halt system, and who cares. Drop the file we're currently holding, so we don't need that anymore. We're going to grab, I think it's called file 400. It was the new file. Yes, and then... Um, we need to link minus one. That puts us in the hallway. Quote, unquote, hallway. And then we need to do that again to go into the lobby. Okay, so now we're here with a class list in our hands, in our hot little hands. Okay, so at this point, we want to replace English with AP English. Yeah. So, um, we could have done it in this room, but we needed to move anyway, and it's, you know, it's either or in which order this happens. Um, but now we need to swap out English for AP English, so like, uh, we're gonna go mode, and that's gonna give us bring us to global, and then we're going to copy uh, M to X, and we're gonna mark, find, uh, oh no, we'll, we'll call it replace, replace English, um, and this will be. Because uh, we're at the start of the file, so we're going to now test if f is equal to x, and if uh, false, jump into replace English. Uh, otherwise, seek back one, copy m to f. That'll be AP English. Okay, great, and then that's kind of done. So now we'll have a class list that'll have all the classes on it except for English. It'll have that be replaced with AP English. So now we've got a list of classes that we can work off of and use as sort of a checklist. I mean, do we want to include times? No, because we're not going to use... We're not going to use this list. Yeah, this list is just what classes the student has, not when the classes are going to happen. So we need to create we we um D 
does lunch happen at the same time in every test? Is it always at 11.35? It's always at 11.35. Because what I'm wondering is... I think these are treated as keywords though, not as like numbers, which kind of sucks. Yeah, I think that's why they've got, I think that's why they underline. I think underline things are keywords. So if it's treated as a keyword, then we're kind of boned. Um, because if I could, if I could just say at 11.35 is lunch, like just look for that. It's like, if that's what you're up to, skip it. Or if, yeah. Which would have meant keeping the times to be worth it, but it's actually not anymore. It's still not. Okay, so that gives us our class list, though. So now I just need to feed that to a scheduling bot. I mean, do I want to make a new one? Nah, I don't really care. Screw the activity score, let's just try and make this puzzle work. This one's going to link 800, grab 200, grab 2000, grab 200, uh, and it's going to talk in local. Because then we want it to start feeding, getting, receiving times, and then sending them out. Um, so if we're just doing all of this, AP English, uh, and then once we've done that, mode back into local. For the next part, yes. Um, Yeah, so these two will talk to each other over local. This one, once it's done, we can actually make this one the exit that handles all of this gimmick. That that would actually be totally fun. Instead of having it blow up and having to create another exit in here and just writing more code, like, and making this thing huge and like really hard to read, like, why not just yeah, actually yeah. So drop that file. Because we want, because uh, we want, we, we want to separate how these communicate to each other. Because we're gonna have three exes that all need to talk to each, that all need that like somewhat, some like they all need to kind of talk to the same bot. This egg, the exit that's holding this. So we need to like split those channels, um, and having them global and local actually splits that quite nicely. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's gonna drop that file and then link 800, and then it's gonna make a new file. Um, and that will be the class schedule. So we need to mark and call this schedule, or we'll call it, we'll call it student. So that'll be the student schedule. This uh, is going to be working. This is now built a class list. So mark and we'll call it class list. Oh, dang it. I've got one down here that I've already called that. Uh, okay, but we'll call it checklist then. Because that's that's realistically what it is, is it's a checklist. Like, it's sort of like, where are we in these loops? Have we got all the classes we want? Okay, let's break the loop so that we can then copy that data into the student's file and do clean up and stuff. That's really what it's for. <clears throat> um, so we do that. And this one, um, Mark, uh, is going to be the school, school classes, school class. Like this is, that's the school, that's the, that's the whole list. Yeah. 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 And I don't have to worry about doing any like deleting or preserving of that list because it's only ever going to get unique keywords to build a list out of. Oh, great. Cool. Thanks for that. That's a, that was an ad there for me. Sweet. All right, I thought that was going to be something actually important. Um, all right. Yeah. Great, I've got an idea of how of what I want to do, I just have no idea how to do it. Well, actually I've also hit another problem because uh, everything up and well, 
because the class list isn't the order in which things are going to happen because even though we've pulled them out of here and these are all happening at a time that works we know that AP English is going to happen after instead of US history and US history needs to move as well so then how do I create an ordered list oh dear how do I organize the list? Um. Is how do I make it on the list? What if Okay, what if this one, the one that's got the master schedule, talks to the checklist. So instead of instead of the checklist saying, here's a class, go find it, we say we say, is this on your list? No, is this on your list? Is this on your list? Is this on your list? If it is, we know we can go, okay, put that on, and we just move through this one by one. And then once we reach the end of this list, we're done. Um, and then when it finds one, it can send that over to here, but that doesn't account for lunch. <sighs> I think we can do maths. No, I don't think these are keywords. I think we might be able to do maths on them. I'm actually going to do a test. I'm going to do a real quick test. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to create a new solution. And just for the sake of it, we're going to link 800, grab 200. We're going to copy F to X. And then we're going to do... Um, I'm going to see if I can add something to it. Uh, so can I add? What would I need to make it a 14? Four, well, let's see. Okay, let's say 13, 15. So we can go, so 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we need to add 500 to X. Okay, so if we add 2X 500, write that back into X. Oh, if we get 13, 15, then we're good. That can we do it? No, numeric value required. Damn it! <sighs> okay, so they are keywords. Um, they're not numbers. Okay, hang on a minute. Then hang on. Let's let's skip ahead a bunch. Let's skip ahead to like nine oh five. So we we'll grab that. So we're here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's seek eleven. Test if X is greater than F. Uh, oh, right, right. We'll need a we need a mark here, don't we? No, mark. Well, let's call it. This, who cares? Let's call it test. Like, literally, who cares? Let's do that. Test of X is greater than F. If false, jump into test. And it should, in theory, if it should be, it should, in theory, well, actually, wait a minute. Instead of, is X greater than, can we do, can we test it against the number? One, two, two, five. Because that's really what we want. We want to see if it's like, yeah. Test it if we can if it's testable against the number. Or is it always gonna read false because keywords and numbers always read false? Ah! <sighs> Crap. I hate that the keywords. 
I hate, well, sorry, that they're strings. I should be more specific. I hate that they're strings and not integers. Ah, that's a pain in the bum. Because that means figuring out lunch. Um, is going to be a pain because I can't just do a straight copy paste. I'm going to need to figure out a way to account for lunch. Um, because it's not in this list. So I need to find a way to skip over it. But I need to find a way to find it. Although, does the length change between? No, there's always, there's only so much time in a day. So there's only so many classes that run in a day. So there's always only ever going to be so many classes you can do in a day. So there's always three classes after lunch. That's basically what I'm looking at. Is there always three classes after lunch? Because what I can do is I can skip forward and scrub lunch from my checklist, create the list, and then basically create a counter for when I copy them back in and just copy over, copy over, copy over, copy over, and once I've, and then have my counter run out here and go, cool, once we've run out here, skip over, seek, seek a couple times, and then go copy over, copy over, copy over. I have that on a counter. I don't even have that on a counter. At that point, I can just have it do a test EOF. Okay, well, yeah, but then I've got to, yeah, no, no, that, yeah, that's what I want to do. Yeah, I can do a test EOF and just make that even simpler. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. And that's how we can account for lunch. Because it's a constant. Okay. So let's trash that. Because that was just literally just like us just tooling around to see if we can do anything. So before we get to the checklist, we've actually got a little bit more work to do. Um, yeah, we do. So... Not far. Grab four hundred. <coughs> um, <clears throat> seek. So how many? How far forward would we need to seek in that file? Uh, well let's, let's set it to one just to have it not freak out on me when I do this. Uh oh, that's a problem. That's not. That's not nearly all of the stuff I wanted it to have. Um, hold on. Why not? Copy F to M. Oh. Oh, it's just gonna... Oh, hang on. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I've just completely stuffed this up. Because we're here. We do that. Okay. And then... Yeah. And then we don't want to seek two. We want to actually just seek one. Yeah, I thought we needed to seek two. But we don't. We just want to seek one. Well, no, we actually... Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Because we skip seek three here. Um, to start there. Do that. We do that. Jump to copy student. Do that. Oh no, that works. That works. Okay, that actually works. Okay. Now we're at the end of the file. Shoot that dude. Grab that file. Sweet. Okay, so how far into this is English? Okay, so uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so let's do then, so seek five. And let's see what that does. Ooh, no, because oh, it's zero indexed. I forgot to account for zero. It's seek four. You silly billy. Yep. Yeah, okay. So then we can seek four, and then how do I, like... Oh, it's just void F, isn't it? Yeah, this is void F. Okay, so seek for void F. Sweet. 
Okay, and that just gives us just a straight computer list. Class list. Yes! Alright. We've now sanitized the data. We're not sanitized, we've filtered it. We've filtered the data to just exactly what we want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. But in order to make this work, it needs to start at the top of the file. So we'll do that too. So now it can do this and go, cool. And then we do this and we grab this. And then we start looking for the word English to replace. So we go, cool, we found it, replace that word. Yeah, buddy. Okay, and then this is all gonna like just poop itself because I haven't written anything into here. That's fine, that's totally fine. Okay, so now we have a class list that we can work off of. Great. Great, 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 great. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we are getting somewhere. I'm actually glad I took a break from Exapunks for a while, just because, like, I was starting to get drained and, like, burned out on it, and, like, I wasn't having fun with Exapunks. Like, I'm really glad I took a break and, like, you know, I'm also glad that I've, like, split up my streams now, so I'm not just playing Exapunks, like, all the time. Like, I'm playing other games as well, which is really, really good. Like, I'm really having fun playing Final Fantasy XII. Um, I'm having heaps of fun playing Minecraft as well. Like, that's just great. Um, and so, yeah, like, I'm glad that I'm, I'm, I've just cut this back to, like, once a week. I think this is just, yeah, I'm feeling more energized. I'm feeling more excited about what I'm doing. It's great. So, now that we have this checklist... We need to do stuff with it, but we also need to start it at the top of its list. So we need to go all the way back to the top of the list. Great. Okay, so we're local. So it uh, needs to do things. Uh, and this needs to do things. <sighs> okay. Um, let's start here, though. Let's just start through the way the loop's going to work. So the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to give it, hang on, what are we going to do? Uh, we're not going to give it a class first. We're going to give it a top. Okay. Hang on a minute. So, um, You know what can keep track of where we are? Instead of having the checklist keep track of where we are. Because here's, here's what I'm thinking. Instead of having that, because we know how many classes there actually should be, because there's always going to be a finite amount. There's always going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven classes on there. Remember, because we're, we're cutting lunch out. So there'll always be like 14 pieces of data. But for the sake, but for the way we're going to handle the counting, it'll be seven. So there'll be seven pieces of data that we need to bring in, or seven pairs, I should say. Seven pairs of data we need to bring in this time, a time and a class, and we need to move our way through that. Um, so if we said, okay, at 8.15, we've got AP Physics. Does, does Hunter have AP Physics? And then the class list can run through its list for an equivalent and go, no, uh, they don't have AP, AP Physics, move on, okay. Uh, have you got AP Spanish? Uh, no. Have you got Band? Have you got Biology? Have you got Spanish 2? Yes, I do have Spanish 2. Sweet. Okay. And then we say at 8.15, they've got Spanish 2. And we send that off to the schedule of the student person. And they go, sweet, I'll write that down. And then put a tick in my X register to say, uh, I've got one pair of data. And when I get to seven pairs of data, I'm going to shoot both of you in the head. Um, and then um, do... Uh, and then send up, and then send up, create a cleaner to clean up this file while it goes off and enters in the new data. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. We're getting somewhere here. Now I think we're getting somewhere. All righty. Yeah. All right. It's, it, that was, it was pretty easy to say, but it's now like extraordinarily hard to do. 
So, right out of the gate, um, I need to uh, seek one. Yeah, I need to seek one, and then I need to copy uh, copy F to M uh, class check, and then I need to get a response back. Copy M to T, and it's going to send me a one or a zero. And if it's true, we'll jump to send class. If it's false, we'll move on yeah so if uh true jump to um send class oops send class um otherwise you'll uh we need to have it then seek one two we need to have it seek wait no hang on a minute no 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 not seek two seek one because remember it's gonna it's gonna send that off and then it's gonna go back there's going to be here, so we need to skip to here. Yeah, so seek one, and then jump to school class. Okay, and then it can just do that. Again, excellent. So it can just run its way all the way through this list. Wonderful. In fact, we can even have this handle its own checking, actually. Yeah, we could. And if we're going to do that, we could have it handle the cleanup of the other guy as well. Anyway, let's put in when we find the valid class. So when we find a valid class, the valid class, when we found it, we'll need to go back one, seek, no, we need to go back two actually, because we want the time and we want, so if we found this one here, no, hang on a minute, but if it's the first one, if we go back two, it's gonna freak the hell out. But it's gonna be here. No, 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 but it clamps. It'll clamp. If it's here, we seek back two, I'm pretty sure it'll just clamp out there. So that'll be fine. Um, if it's the first class, so that should be okay. Uh, so we seek back two. Yeah, and then copy. Okay, no, no, okay. Seek two, and then we need to mode. Because, uh, so mode. In fact, I'm going to make it mode first. Just so that way, mode, that we know why this is like who it's talking to in this method we know that we're going to be talking to x a here okay so it's going to copy over uh copy f to m and that's going to be the time and then copy f to m and that is going to be the class so it'll do that do that and then it'll be here so I need it to then seek one and then jump to school class. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Cause then I can just jump back into here and do another check. Excellent. Okay. Right. Cool beans. And we can just build a, build a schedule that way with AP English and everything. All right, cool. Um, <clears throat> now this doesn't right now check for the end of the file. So it is, well, actually, <sighs> does it, well, let's, let's not for now. I don't know where to put the end of file check, but it doesn't matter. We'll have it freak out and figure that stuff out later on. What am I going to do now? What am I doing now? Okay, so I've got that. Well, I need to write in, you know, these things happening. Yeah. So the checklist is going to receive a. F oh, wait, hold on. Whoopsie daisy. It needs. This needs to mode again to go local. Or well, this is going to be real bad, real fast. Mode local. Okay. Then we go back into here and we send off the class checks. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to receive a class name. So we're going to copy M to X. 
That'll be a class name. And, uh... <clears throat> then you're going to do mark. Well, let's call it class check because that's what that's what it's doing. Um, test if x is equal to. Uh, no, test if yeah, x is equal to f. Yeah, yeah. Actually, but what I want to do before that is I want to test eof. Test eof, and if uh, true, jump to. Uh, to no class. Okay, and that'll be mark no class. <laughs> and that'll copy zero. Okay, and uh, so copy. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once we're at the end of the file, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, uh, if false, jump to class check. Okay, but if you find a class, uh, we need to, uh, we don't need to seek or anything actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we need to copy 1 to M, seek back to the beginning of our file. Oh, that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem. That's going to create a bug, because that's going to mean we're going to have multiple classes. Mm-hmm. Not unless we delete them. Not unless we delete them. Yeah. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna seek seek back one. Void F. Yes. So we will now scrub that class off of our list. Because now it's checked. We will like that's our like checking it off the list. We'll scrub it. Go back to the beginning of the file. and jump into checklist. Yeah, okay, and then this one needs to jump as well. So jump into, oh, actually, not only does it need to jump, it needs to reset the file, and then jump into uh, checklist. Yeah, 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 because if there's no class, we don't need to do any, any other file manipulation. We just jump straight back in and call that one a day. Okay, all right, that's that's pretty handy dandy. Okay, that's really good, I like that. Um, yeah, so that one, this one, the only way to break out of this loop is to just, is to kill it. And that's okay, that's that's totally fine, because it can like freak out in local um, all it likes, because I think this one, uh, when it reaches the end of its file, can just sort of straight up ignore it, maybe? I don't know. Well, we could put in... What do we, what do, we do? Um, we could put in a test EOF here, actually, and then have it trigger, like, once we've reached the end, we go, okay, well, we've done kind of everything. Yeah, so actually, yeah, that's what we'll do. Test EOF, and if true, jump to cleanup. This is what we'll call it. And that'll be here. Mark cleanup and uh, cleanup uh, is gonna be a little bit tricky because I need to. Well, we'll drop the file we're holding because we don't need it anymore. We want to leave it there as it is, and then we do want to do a kill. But I want to make sure that uh, this one that's over here is like out of harm's way when we do it. Yeah, so I want to kill, grab, um, what's the file it was actually holding? Because it was holding the, it was holding this list, hold on, uh, 400, so it was holding file 400, so we're going to grab 400, wipe, and then halt. Yeah, so that cleans that up, hopefully. I might have to put in some noob steps in there, just to make the timings work, but like, that's the general gist of it. Um... Where... Okay, what's next? Uh, okay, right. Yeah, well, this one is literally not doing anything right now. So, its entire job is to copy things and we'll put things into a t counter. So, it'll copy uh, M to F and that will be a time. 
and then uh, copy m to f m to f and that will be a class and then add to x1 write that into x test if x is equal to 7 and if false jump to student right so then once it reaches 7 now we continue on with the program and this is where we're going to we're going to link 800 because we need to like get the hell out of harm's way like real fast because once we've got the final pieces of data this is going to run through actually yeah because once it's sent through where's the send class here right once it's sent this to here it's going to do some business here which should give us enough time for it to get to here and then get to here before it gets to here for us to be well and truly out of there for this thing to get shot okay so i think the timing should actually work because like this has a lot of this 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 has to do a lot of like you know as it has a lot of stuff it's got to do before it can like get done um so yeah now now we need to do some more tricky bits so we link 800 and then we link 802 so now we're back into the classroom and now i need to make uh another file i need to make another exa wrist Oof. um i need to make another file another not another file i need to make another exa to grab that file to enter data into so i need to make another scribe but thankfully because i can you know i can name it the same thing because they're in separate exas we'll just mark this one subscribe and then make sure we do our organizing I, this is super handy honest to god this is like my top tip is have a comment with a bunch of dashes just so you can see what what are different exits like this exa this is a separate exit to the one that's doing all of this and so on and so forth it just makes being able to very quickly at a glance see what's doing what super easy <sighs> okay link 802 Repl scribe and then so we do all of this we do well actually we can once we're out of there we can seek back to the beginning of the file and then do this and then we yeah oh my god uh, then we have a timer. Yeah, we do. We've got a counter. <laughs> oh my god, we have a counter. Yeah, we built we built a counter here, and now we can use it to to count down to lunch. Excellent. Okay. Um, it's sitting in our X register, which means that it'll be inherited by the scribe. Oh. Fantastic. Okay. Cool. 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 So then, all um, this student exa needs to do is um, put itself into a loop for sending data, which we can count down on. And when it reaches zero, it can wipe and hold. We don't need to do a kill step, which saves us some activity. Yeah. Okay. So mark, copy. And it's going to copy F to M. Um, and that'll be... Okay, it needs to do the step twice, doesn't it? Yes, so that'll be the time. And then uh, copy F to M. That'll be class. Uh, do I want to do it in local? Well, there's no reason to, because this is going to be halted. Well, and these are already talking in local anyway, so like they're not... Yeah, so I can just leave it global. I'm not going to put in an extra line of code. Um, especially because we're coming up against the limit as it is. So let's keep it as is. That's fine. Um, so we've got the time, we've got the class. Then we're going to subtract from X1, write that back into X. No! You know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do? Uh, we get out of there. Copy that do that and then we uh, copy x to t subtract from t1 write that back into t 
We'll do a T loop. And then, uh, if it's true, because anything over anything that isn't zero is true. If true, jump into copy. Otherwise, wipe the file you're holding and halt. And that is that's that's the ball game for that one. Okay. Um, now, scribe is going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, scribe needs to <sighs> scribe needs to grab. 235, seek two, because we want to skip over the names. Yeah, because we want to skip over, so zero, well, yeah, zero, one, we want to seek to there. Okay. Um, oh crap, where is it? It's all up here, isn't it? Yeah, so we want to, can we just, yeah, hide that? Right. Okay, uh, and then I just want to hide this for now. I want to hide this for now. I only want to focus on this. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, seek two. And it's got a counter in its T register, but we're not going to use that one because we want to use the one in the X register um, because we need to do some testing to make sure that we skip over lunch uh, in this file. So we copy, so we overwrite the all of this um, but we skip over that and we just, over like, I mean, I know we're overriding this data as well, which is kind of redundant. Kind of, kind of is redundant. <laughs> we could save ourselves... You know what? No, let's follow this through. Let's see if this even works. Like, because right now it kind of doesn't matter. Let's, we don't even know if this is going to work. I was going to say, oh, we can make this more efficient by like only sending over one piece of data. It doesn't need to. But, you know, basically we're just doing some crazy list sorting. But like, let's not worry about that now. Let's just get it in, run the program and see if we actually get a valid result. If we get a valid result, then we can worry about making it more efficient. But if it, if it doesn't work, like, you know, there's no sense in making something that doesn't work more efficient. You're just making it better at doing something bad, at, at doing something wrong. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, so we seek two, so we do that, and then... And then I need to put it into a loop. So mark, and it's going to be a paste loop. Um, it's going to copy... Yeah, because it's seeking to the time, isn't it? Yeah, zero, one, two, yeah, 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 okay, okay. So we're gonna copy M to F, and that's gonna be the time. Copy M to F, and that'll be the class. And then we're going to subtract from X1, write that back into X. And uh, so, wait, so it'll be seven, six, five, four. When it gets to three, we want it to skip. No, we want it to skip after four. Once it gets to four, wait, it'll go six, five, four, three. No, no, once, it, yeah, it'll get to three here. So once it gets to three, we want it to skip. Yeah. Uh, test if X is equal to three. And if true, jump to skip. Just, yeah, just jump to skip, actually. Just mark skip. Uh, and then we go mark, we'll have an end as well. Uh, skip, um, otherwise we need to test if X is equal to zero. Uh, and if uh, true, jump to... Actually, no, 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 if false, yeah, here's what we're going to do. We don't need to do a mark end. Here's what we can do. Um, yeah, if false, jump uh, to... No, because we wanted to do stuff. Yeah, so no, if true, jump to an end. Yeah, we'll have we'll create an end. Yeah, true, jump to end. Otherwise, because uh, we needed to like... Do some, we needed to we needed to move along <clears throat> so it's going to copy that and then that actually no we don't because then it'll do that do that and it'll automatically move its header along 
and then we can replace that, replace that, and it'll automatically move its header along. So, actually, if false, yeah, no, if false, jump to paste. Yeah, we don't need a mark end. Um, and then once you've done that, if it's true, you'll fall through and hold. Great. Okay, so skip, which is just going to skip over lunch. Uh, so it's going to be here at that point, and then we want it to go one, two. So we want to seek two again. Uh, we go seek two, and then jump to paste. Yeah, basically it's a, this is like the, the this is like in a, in a loop, in a for loop. Uh, is it a for loop? Well, just I think any just uh, any programming loop. Um, this is sort of your continue step. Like, you know, if if x equals this, continue, which means you just you don't you don't run that step. You just skip it and move on to and you move like start the loop again. Yeah, that's base. That's that's this is the the long way of doing that. Yeah. Okay. At least that's how you do it in C sharp. I I I, I, I thought C sharp would be similar, uh, do it in a similar way to like. I mean, it does it. In, I mean, I mean, uh, I think Python does it that way, and pretty sure Java does. But Java and C sharp have a lot in common. But I mean, I took a look at like how C plus plus handles like just really basic like outputting data to a console. And it's like, it's like a very different way of writing it. I actually prefer the C-sharp way, because the C-sharp way is super straightforward. It's just a, it's just a function you call. You just go console.writeline, put in your data inside the parentheses. Done. It's, oh, I like that so much better. Like the C-sharp way, just, the C, sorry, the C++ way just looks really complex. Um, and I don't even, and, and if that's, if that's complex, I don't even want to know how you do it in C. Oh my God. That just sounds even more difficult. Okay, uh, so that's kind of that. That's handling that. That's handling itself. I think we've got a whole program here, people. I reckon this will run all the way through to an end. Okay, so then they're gonna figure themselves out. Again, we might have to fiddle with timings. No, we don't. We don't have to fiddle with timings. But we got a wrong list! Yeah, that's why I didn't worry about making it slightly more efficient. Okay, so, what did we get? We've got something that works, but okay, so what's wrong with it? So it wants computer art at 1045. Oh, well, would you look at that? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, ha, yeah. Uh, okay, hang on a minute. Hold the phone, why is... Spanish 2 Health and Physics, Free Calculus, wait, hold on, oh, it wants Free Calculus at 115, oh, and it wants 905, 915, oh, crap, Health and Physics are happening at the same time, too, ah, um, ooh, Okay, so a couple problems. First of all, when we skip over lunch um, and tell it to just keep on writing on, um, it's not kind of working. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's... So now... So, okay. New problem. Got to figure that out. But I think that's a problem that will kind of solve itself if we solve the second problem. The second problem is things happening at the same time so hunter now has health and physics at the same time which is um yeah i mean that's that's some like harry potter hermione levels of like bad scheduling um 
and I'm pretty sure that the, the fine students at Espanola Valley High School don't have those little time travel gimmicks. Um, which, by the way, I, I kind of like... I kind of like, you know, I want to throw a flag on the play on the behalf of, like, the staff of Hogwarts for giving a child the ability to travel through time. Like... You, that's just such a bad idea on what like that's I mean I mean I mean you know there are some arguments to be made that like time travel the ability to go through, have, have time travel should be regulated in the same way nuclear weapons are right it's like if you screw up time it's like a really bad doubt time really well it's really bad so like you know basically you know you're handing a child a nuclear weapon like what are you doing <laughs> Yeah, and that's just a really bad idea. Like, you know, I don't care that like how trustworthy Hermione is. You just shouldn't hand people that should. Nobody should have that ability just willy nilly. All right, um, you know, oy, that's just so bad. Not to mention that, like, I mean, it's they're like, oh my god, I'm taking so many classes that I now have to travel through time because my scheduling's so bad. Doesn't that effectively, like, just in... Because, because you know, Hermione's, Hermione's concept of linear time remains constant. Um, which means that for her... Like, everybody else has, like, a six-hour day or seven-hour day. And hers could be an infinitely long day. You know? I mean, she could have a 16-hour day in seven hours. But that's still... She's worked... She's doing a 16-hour day every day. That's really bad. <laughs> Although, yeah, no, that's just really bad. Like, that's just, yeah, this is that's just really, really bad. It's just not good for your health. So, yeah, there's a, I, I take, I take a few issues with that. <sighs> okay. Hello, my name is John. Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to, welcome to Harry Potter, uh, welcome to Harry Potter Temporal, Temporal Mechanics uh, 101. Um, everything wrong with Temporal Mechanics in the Harry Potter universe. Well, it's not wrong. The, the ethics of, Temporal mechanics in the Harry Potter universe. Um, so yeah, we still we need to fix that. So maybe then instead of maybe we keep the times. Maybe we keep the times. Yeah. So we say, okay, find this time on on this list here. We say, find this time. No worries. Okay, so find 8.15. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it here? Find 8.15. No dramas. You found it. Sweet. Okay, now find me uh, this... Now, uh, is this class in 8.15? Uh, no? Okay, move on. Find 8.15 again. Uh... until we get yeah we could do that we could do that until we get like we get a true here if we get a true here and a true here then we scrub them both out and say find the next time slot uh yeah yeah that could work um the problem is, though, is that now classes are timed to that time slot. Yeah. No, no, because we'll have to create two separate search lists. So we create one search list for the time, one search list for the class. Is basically, I think, the way that's got to work. Yeah, I think so. Um... Yeah, it just means we have to seek, we have to create two separate seek loops. So seek for time and say, okay, find, you know, 9.15, done. Okay, so now we're looking for all the classes inside 9.15. Uh, is this class there? No, is this class there? No, blah, blah, blah. And, but the problem is, is if none of the classes are in there, how do we break out of that class loop then? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a problem. 
Ugh. Okay, I don't know how to figure that out right now. Um, the one problem with Exapunks is that I can't quite stream as long as I'd like to. Like, I'm going to kind of call that a day for now. Just because, like... We got... I mean, we've gotten pretty far. Like, we've gotten pretty far here. Like, I I'm pretty happy with... Oh, yeah, let me put it back so you can see what I'm doing. We've gotten pretty far here. Like, I I'm pretty happy with where we're at. We've got most of a program. And bits of a work, like... The cleanup here and the timing for, for like once we're ready to like send it over worked flawlessly. So like that's all G. So we got that. We've got the bones of a program now, like from start to finish. That's further than we were before. Like at the start of the stream, we were like in the lobby ready to start doing the meet and we had no idea how to do it. And now we've got a complete program from start to finish. We just need to like, yeah. Um, figure out what happens when. <laughs> so we're further along than we were than we were when we started, um, but we're not quite there yet. No, that's okay. That these this is the bonus campaign, and bonus campaign missions. I always knew were going to be like a humongous, humongous pain in the butt. Um, well, because they're supposed to be. These are supposed to be like the hardest. This is like you know. If you're if you're hardcore enough to have played through the whole Eggs of Punks campaign and unlock this, like, yeah, this is like the extra hard puzzles. So this is this is like yeah, this is this is Eggs of Punks on legendary mode, <laughs> legendary difficulty. Okay. Cool boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, you know what? No, I'm gonna stop thinking about it now. I'm gonna stop thinking about it because like I'm just gonna drive myself insane thank you so much for tuning in today if you like what you saw follow us here um if, you, if you're if you're interested in just the exapunks content i'm playing exapunks every sunday from 2 p.m aest uh check if you click down below there's a schedule down below and that'll have my schedule in your time zone so you'll see when i'm playing exapunks um but it, you know by all means check out what else is on the schedule so on thursdays and fridays my time that might be different on yours but again have a look at the schedule I'm also playing Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age, and that's just, I'm just having a heap of fun playing that. Uh, and on Saturdays, I think, um, I used to do something on Mondays, but like I've had to change my schedule because of the way the world is. Uh, on Saturdays now, um, I think I might start playing Minecraft on Saturdays. So that'll be kind of fun, so you can check that out. I'm not sure about time specifically on a Saturday. So if you want to get notified of when we go live on Saturdays, or at least that's, Sat again, Saturday my time, that might be a Friday your time. Um, uh, if you want to get notified of when I go live, then follow us on Twitter at Pint Party. It's linked down below. If you want to keep up with the rest of our gimmicks, follow us over on Instagram at Pint.Party as well. Um, that's everything that's non-Twitch related. Like everything else that isn't Twitch related goes on Instagram, but everything including Twitch stuff is on Twitter. I should actually put the Twitter handle up here. I've got to change that. Um... Yeah, yeah. So if you like what you saw, by all means, uh, check us out there. Um, if you want to watch the rest of the Eggs of Punks content, uh, f check out our YouTube channel um, because the VODs are only on our Twitch page for two weeks and there aren't any Eggs of Punks videos on, on, on Twitch at the moment, except there's some highlights. There's some highlights of me like doing some maths in earlier puzzles and stuff like that, so they're kind of fun to watch. But uh, yeah, if you want to see the other Exapunks streams, and there's honestly like I've only exclusively played Exapunks on stream. So, what's my what's my hours at? Ninety six hours. There's ninety six hours of content there. So if you like realistically, what this is for is for people to put on in the background and like just have some white noise on in the background as they work from home. So um, you know because you can't work in busy office environments and stuff like that anymore. So yeah, I mean, there's 96 hours of, <laughs> of, of like, you know, of just some big hairy idiot playing Exapunks. So by all means, check that. It's in a, it's in a playlist called Gimmick Punk. Um, so have fun with that. What else is, oh right, and that's, and that's, sorry, and that, that playlist, the Gimmick Punk playlist is on YouTube. That's their permanent home. So that's linked down below as well, but you can just search uh, Pint Party on YouTube and you'll find our YouTube channel. And there's the Exapunks playlist, which is called Gimmick Punk. There's the Gimmick Age, which is all the Final Fantasy stuff, which doesn't have a lot in it right now, but that's going to be coming out this week. Like, there's going to be a heap of Final Fantasy videos coming out this week on there, um, so just stay tuned. Uh, and the other thing you can find... Oh, and uh, there's also uh, Retro Gimmicks, where I played SimCity 2000, and the newest series, Pinecraft, which, has, which is the Minecraft gameplay videos. Again, there's no videos out yet. Those are going to be coming out, I think, next week. Um, or maybe towards the end of 
this week. I'm not sure. Uh, there'll be oh no no some of the videos are coming out towards the end of this week and then the latest episode will be out Monday next week. So Monday week. Sorry, so tomorrow week I should say. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's how I've scheduled it. Anyway, follow us there. There's new videos coming out Monday, Monday to Friday every day, or every weekday for in Australia. So that'll be that can be Tuesday to Saturday if you're in the states, or on that side of the of the uh, the international dateline. And is there anything else I need to mention? Oh, the podcast. Yeah, I do a podcast. That's kind of important. So every Tuesday we put out a podcast called Pint Party as well. That's on. Um, it's on Spotify, it's on iTunes, it's everywhere all good podcasts are sold. It. Spotify link is down below, but you can just search for us on iTunes if that's more your thing. It's also on YouTube as well. So if you're not, like, I mean, I don't know a lot of people who prefer to watch, who prefer to consume their podcasts on YouTube, but it's there in case you do. Like, I, I don't, I, you know, however you want to listen to podcasts, I really don't care. Like, it's, it's, it's you know, to each their own, honestly. Um, I like to listen to podcasts while I go for walks, but some people like to listen to, like, I knew people who like to listen to podcasts while they drive. I knew some people who like to just literally just sit on a beanbag and like close their eyes and listen to podcasts. Mate, whatever works for you, I'm, I'm 100% supportive of. So um, so the, the podcasts are on, are on YouTube as well and, and they're, on, they're in their own playlist as well and they come out every Tuesday. Um, so yeah, by all means, check that out. Uh, the link is down below if you're more into Spotify. If you just want, like it, the, the YouTube video one is just an audio only experience. It's just the audio podcast on YouTube. Um, just as a more, more ways for people to get it, but that'll be all for today. I will be back. Oh, I should actually say when I'll be streaming next, I will be back on Thursday at 2 PM AEST with Final Fantasy 12. Um, we, oh boy. And that is going to be an interesting one because we are going to be facing off against, uh, Garuda, which is like the first, the first like proper boss fight. In Final Fantasy 12, as far as I'm concerned, like there, there were uh, there there have been other like boss fights, but like Garuda is the first like in my at least in my mind is the first like proper boss fight where like I might not actually be adequately leveled. I may have to go and do some more serious grinding to actually like be able to do it. So we will find that out. But until then, this has been Pipe Party. Cheers.